Today, we're going to be testing out Project IDX, which is a free AI code editor, kind of like an alternative to Cursor, Bolt.new, Windsurf, etc. But it doesn't cost a penny to use if you use it in the way that I'll show you today. And you can get free access at IDX.dev. And from there, you can see how you can basically get started and build out your own project. Kind of feels a little bit similar to Bolt when you're actually using it. I'll show you some examples of what you can build, how you can use it for SEO in a second. And you can see here, for example, you can plug in a Gemini API key, but there's also some new updates where, for example, you can install the client extension and with client, you can actually use whatever API you want to use. Again, it uses previews inside here and you can basically get started. Now, if you get started and sign up for an account, what you can see is a setup like this, and you can actually choose between different projects. So for example, if we go to the template section, you got Angular, Next.js, Astro, React, Simple HTML, Svet, and then you can Svelte or however it's pronounced. And then from here, you can basically choose between like backend, mobile, uh, databases, etc. You can see you can actually connect it to Firebase, which I know probably some people would use for programmatic SEO. And then you've got some other options like, for example, Google Maps platforms. And also if you scroll to the solution section over here, you can actually try different pre set up templates. So what's interesting about this is you can link it to GitHub and there's a bunch of like pre-made templates you can test out. So for example, like a, a compass travel demo or a rock, paper, scissors game, right? Any sort of app or website that you can think of, you can basically develop using this tool. So what we'll do is totally random examples. We'll select Astro from the list. You can choose between many different options. We'll put test in right here. And then from here, it's going to create like a test environment, right? You see how we're using Tailwind as well to develop this. Now, it's going to take a couple of minutes to load. But if we compare them side by side, you see like a very similar sort of environment with Bolt.new. Bolt.new, of course, is a paid tool and unless you do not hit the tokens limit, whereas IDX.google is free. And now you've got the whole setup, right? So these are all your project files, your Astro, etc. And if we scroll to extensions, we can install Client. Now, Client is a coding agent that you can use to connect to different APIs. So let's say, for example, you want to use Claude or you want to use ChatGPT or you want to use an API from Gemini, etc. Then you can click on install over here. So we'll install the free extension like so. You can see it's installing now. And now we have it installed. Now, once you've installed Client, and you need this for the project really. From there, you can scroll down to Klein in the bottom left, so it'll appear once you've installed it. And now you can select your API provider, right? So if you want to use a free API, you can select Gemini. And then from here, we can go to aistudio.google.com. We can grab a free API key. There we go. This doesn't cost you a penny. Copy that, go back to your project, plug in the API key, hit let's go. And then from here, you can start testing out. The best API that you can use is Claude, but Claude, of course, costs money to use. So if you want to get this completely for free, so for example, IDX is free, the API is free, then you would use a combination of IDX with AI Studio. Now from here, we can run a few tests. So let's say, for example, create a basic blog for my personal brand, Julian Goldie. And in the chat here, it's going to start code the project. You just hit save once it's done that, and it's going to keep scrolling through a few different options. So every time it creates a new file, you click save and then it will start building out. And sometimes you're going to have to wait for it to load. Sometimes it's going to have a few errors, but overall it's fairly simple. If you want to expand the chat, you can just grab it like that. And what you've got here as well is a preview in the right hand side, right? So if you want to build our app, so I'll show you how to do that in a second. But if you just want to build out a website, for example, you can see how easy that is using this process. Now it's going to give you a really basic like outline right here, right? So we've got the website here, but it looks absolutely terrible. So what we're going to do from here, we're just going to go back and forth a bit, right? So you can see here, I'm saying, make it look better, add some different sections for me, who I am, etc. It's asking for some information about me and my business. So what I'm going to do is I'll just take the example content from here. We'll plug that into the chat. So basically I'm taking that content that I've already got pre-made and now it's beginning to insert the H2s, H3s, etc. And you can see we're beginning to get that built out properly. So for example, I've taken a screenshot of my website, plug that into the chat over here. You can just take a screenshot, drag it in to the chat down here. And then I've said, and then it was asking like some information about all the design elements you want. I didn't really want to give it too much prompting. So I said, just go ahead and figure it out. And then I actually went ahead and started doing that. Pretty simple stuff. Now that is super, super basic. I'm not impressed at all by that so far. So what we're going to do now is we'll go back to here and we'll try next JS. 
And I'm also going to get the API key from Claude because I think that'll be much better for actually coding, which will get us better outputs. So, so let's delete these API keys right here. Going to grab an API key like so. Now we'll go into our Next.js folder and we'll install client again. You seem to have to install client each time you set up a new project, but it just takes a couple of seconds. And there we have client ready to go. And again, this is a Next.js project. So it's a different type of project versus say something like Astro. And we'll go inside the selection for the API. We'll select Anthropic, plug in the API key here, hit let's go. And then we'll just test it out. So I'll say create a five page personal branding website and you got the preview in the top right, right? So you got your project files here, the chat over here, and then the preview in the top right. And there we go, we've got the site ready to go. Now, if you wanna expand the preview, you can just drag it around like that. And you can see it's right in all the actual content, right? So the previous example, when I was using Astro and Gemini's API, it wouldn't write the content and it was asking me to do that for it. It was a lot more work. Next.js seems to give a better output for sure, especially if you're using Claude's API, it just seems superior for coding. What we can do in a second as well, is when we click this, you can actually open it on a test domain, right? So if you wanted to see what it looks like as it's deployed, you can do that right here. You can also see the charges for the API requests, right? So you can see, for example, 0 0.02 cents to create each page, which is quite interesting because normally you won't see a breakdown from what I've tested before. One thing that I would say though, is like if you're using IDX and you're using Claude 3.5 Sonnet in here with Klein, it's going to cost you money. Whereas if you're on like the free trial of Windsurf, that has not charged me so far. And you get free access to Claw 3.5 Sonic. But this definitely seems more comprehensive when you do with Anthropo. Whilst that's being done, what we can also do is try creating a Flutter project, right? So Flutter, I think this is more suited for apps, for example. So we're going to click create like so. And we've got our Next.js project over here. We have our Flutter project over here. And now the Next.js project is pretty much ready to go. So npm run dev over there. And if you click on open over here and then open, you can basically deploy it on a test. So you can see, for example, here's the test name for the website. Might take a little minute or so for the preview to pop up, but you can see here how you've basically got that personal branding website. And again, all we had to do was plug in a very simple prompt, which was create a five page personal branding website as a task. And then client just figured it out with the API requests and even hosted it, as you can see here. And then we've got the test domain. If we click through these pages in the navigation, so for example, the contact design is super nice. I don't know if these blog links are actually going to work. Let's test it out. Doesn't seem to do anything when I click on them or it directs to the blog page. Let's click on project, see what we got. Not bad. These buttons don't work, but you can see how easy it is to build out. And then you would just keep going back and forth. And then you got the about me page right here. Now, if you wanted to customize that to you, your business, et cetera, then you just go back to IDX over here and you just say, you know, customize this to me, Julian Goldie. Here's some info about me. Grab some information from my about page like this. Go back to IDX, plug that underneath and then say brand colors and hit brand colors like so. And that should start running through the project. Now you can also see here the total API cost which is really, really useful. So you can see how much this project has cost us so far. So to build out this website, host it, deploy it, et cetera, that cost us $0.2, right? So 20 cents. And then you can see now that we've added the information, it's even linking out to like our Upwork profile, Udemy, et cetera, all the information about us. So it's going to be interesting to see what that brings up next. Whilst we're waiting for that, let's install client on our Flutter project. So extensions, there's some interesting stuff here. Like for example, you got the test results over there as well. I've not tested now. And um, we'll plug in client again, get that installed. You seem to have to do that every time. And you might be wondering, okay, what are the use cases for this? So you can build your own tools and apps. So for example, like this tool was created and embedded using bolt.new. You can also see, for example, you can build out websites like this. This gets a bit of traffic each day. It just took about 60 seconds of work. You can build the same thing inside IDX. Additionally, you can build your own tools, apps, websites, etc. personal branding websites, even like one page exact match domains. So for example, let's say it was Black Friday. You could probably do it like that as well. Here's an example of a landing page I built. I think this was using bolt.new again. And you can see how easy it is to build out these one page landers, funnel traffic to your funnels, and then rank for like exact match keywords. Obviously, you got a quality control all this stuff as you go along but it's pretty simple. So we'll go back into Anthropic, grab that API key from before, plug it in there, 
and let's see what that does next. So we're going to say just something super basic, like create a keyword research tool. And you can see, you can select between web and you can select between Android, right? So Flutter is a bit different because it's more designed for developing apps. Whereas for example, when you go onto the next JS project, it's more like a website sort of project, right? So you're not going to see an Android preview right there, but you will see the web preview. One of the most interesting things about this is like how much the web design industry and coding industry is being disrupted. Over the last few weeks, I've seen, for example, project IDX with Klein, obviously Rise, you got Windserve, you got Bold.new, V0 as well, and there's many, many others, right? So this industry seems to only be going one way, and this is the worst it's ever going to be, let's be honest. I definitely think that IDX is harder to use, just more time consuming. Windsurf will just go off and create the website, whereas there seems to be a lot more back and forth and like clicking of save and approve and et cetera, that sort of thing inside IDX. This seems to be super buggy. So it's saying like task completed, but you can clearly see like nothing is done. Probably my ignorance at using these tools, but it's definitely not as user-friendly or as efficient from what I've seen versus Windsurf. Here's an example of a app I actually created earlier for expense trackers. So for example, if you click on plus right there, you can add in your description, your amount, and you can preview it inside the browser as well over there, right? So you can build like a basic apps, but it doesn't seem to work every time. Like I've just shown you, I'm not going to be SEO. I'm just going to be completely transparent. Like that's how it is. And now we can see after going back and forth with the coder, it's created this site. It's looking clean. Like the font is not great. I think you'd have to go back and change that. Let's click on get started, see what it does. Let's try and host it, see what it does next. Get started, doesn't do anything. Learn what doesn't do anything. It's not working. It's created some content on the homepage. So definitely better than the project we created before. Let's click on the about, services, blog, contact. These links do not seem to work. Even after going back and forth, like look at the chat. If we keep scrolling up, like it, it goes on for a long time. Like this was a lot of back and forth. So I would say this is okay. Like. It's honestly, there's a lot of hype around Project IDX at the minute. From what I've seen, it's just not that user-friendly. It has a lot of more bugs, even when you're using Claude. And Windsurf AI seems to still be winning when it comes to this stuff, right? You can see, for example, this is just not working at all. Let's try and open up the local host that's recommended. Yeah, this is, this is just not working. All right. So thanks so much for watching. What I've actually done is plug this, all these video notes from today into this tutorial. So if you want all the video notes, links, etc., just scan the QR code. You can get the video notes from today. If you want my best prompts for creating websites with bold.new, windsurf, AI, etc., all of these are based on what's working for me. When it works, then you can get that. Just scan the QR code on this video. You can get that inside the classroom of the AI SEO Success Lab, along with 53 AI SEO tools that I've built. This has taken me hundreds of hours to do for you. And I'm just giving it away for free. So join the ASEO Success Lab. You get 50 free ASEO tools along with a free ASEO content tool, a free one click content optimizer, a content humanizer, et cetera. Pretty much everything you can imagine when it comes to SEO. Along with, if you get stuck or if you have any questions, you can ask our community of like 1,700 SEOs who are doing similar things to you and can problem solve along with you. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get a free one-to-one -one SEO strategy session, feel free to get that link in the comments description. We'll show you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 business a month and generate thousands of dollars in sales and autopilot. On this free link building acceleration session, you will get a free SEO domination plan to discover the secrets of link building. Answer any questions you have. You learn the best link building strategy for your website plus how to quickly outrank your competitors to link building, how to 10 X SEO traffic based on what's working for us. And if you sign up for three months, you get one month free. If you sign up for six months, you get two months free. If you sign up for 12 months, you will get four months free of SEO. So feel free to book that link building acceleration session. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.